Welcome to Seismic Cinema's third podcast. This is Colin here and I'm joined by Paul. Hello Paul, how are we doing? Hello there, how's it going? Yeah, all good, all good. Excited for excited for week number three, yeah? Yeah, we're starting to get into a wee bit of a, a roll of this. So in order to cut down the, the length of our videos, which we're, we've been trying to do, we're going to just get right into this this week's video, which is a spoiler review of the book of the Mandalorian. Is that right, Paul? Yep, it's a wee. It's basically season three of the Mandalorian. Um, not much boba at all, but that's we'll get to that later on in the review. So I think like last week it's important to just get that out of the way. Boba Fett is in this episode for a couple of seconds and he doesn't have any lines. But I was very frustrated last week, as you know. But this week, I was kind of more prepared for that. Although I did expect him to be in it. And I was able just to enjoy what was a really uh, packed episode. Yeah, it's, de- it's, definitely, it's definitely a lot different than the, the first four episodes we got. Yeah. Uh, if you if you take away the title of the series, if you just don't think about it, then you can just really enjoy the episode for what it is, and it's a real, it's a real good tribute to Star Wars through and through. Yeah, all the different movies, TV shows, and all the different forms. So, Paul, can you remember? We quiz for you. Can you remember the name of the episode? Uh, the stranger that. Walked in from the desert. <laughs> I think you've combined two different ones there. Damn it! It was, and I'm not. I'm not currently checking Disney Plus for the answer. Was it not the? The stranger was, uh, from the desert. It was something from the desert. Tell you what, the stranger. I, 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 as, as we've been doing, um, I've got the the episode on in the background while we're talking as well, so I'm sure um, it will soon correct me otherwise. So, Paul, where does this week's episode start? It starts on the plains of Mos Pelgo, which we have previously uh, been in in The Mandalorian Season 2, Episode 1. That's very well remembered. It's actually it's Chapter 9, isn't it? I suppose if we're going by the chapters. I hate you. Sorry. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we get start off with I think it's a uh, four of the Pike uh, Syndicate around the speeder. They're collecting credits and a chest full of spice when the coolest non-armored character in the galaxy turns up. Um, is his name Cobb Vanth? Cobb Vanth, yes, he was obviously. In Mandalorian season two, episode one, also known as Chapter Nine, and he, we first saw him. Uh, Din Jaren first saw him uh, with Boba Fett's armor on. Yes, that's but, right. Yeah. But he's he's now not wearing armor. He's just got a nice wee jumper on and a nice wee kind of. Yeah. What, what do you call that? Like a. Snood. What do you call the wee pipe? Yeah, kind of snood. I know, but he still he still looks pretty cool. He's played by Timothy Oliphant, who Oliphant that may be better. Uh, not somebody an actor I knew before Mandalorian, but one of my friends had was quite it was quite a big deal, I think, to people who knew who he was. Uh, yeah, well, I've seen him in quite a few things. So, uh, yeah, when I seen him in this, I was quite ecstatic. He's been in like things like US Office as we cameos. Um, he was actually one of the ghost faces in Scream. If nobody's seen Scream, I apologise, but he's one oh, of them. I haven't, I've not seen it yet. No, it's an old Scream, an older Scream. Right. I've not seen that one either. <laughs> well, spoiler, he's one of them. Uh, and he's also, funnily enough, he's a marshal in another series that I really enjoyed. It was uh, Justified. He's actually a deputy US marshal in, uh, I think it's Kentucky. And he's pretty much just the same, the same guy. In this just cool, calm, and uh, just plays the character well. He has a very likable character. He's one of those kind of. He's quite. He'd be classed as a minor character, but when I saw him, I was quite excited to see him. And 
Um, hopefully we see more of them. So what happens? Uh, oh, just a wee bit of backstory on Cobb Van for those who might not be aware. Uh, he actually existed in Star Wars canon before The Mandalorian. He's actually in one of the Aftermath books. Actually, more than one of the Aftermath books. It's a trilogy of books set after Return of the Jedi. He's not actually in the main story. They do like the interludes where it kind of tells the story of how he gets the armor from Tatooine. I think they changed it slightly for the TV show, but he was a character that existed before that. Huh? I, didn't, I did not know that. Yeah, from the so desert, the, from the stranger. Yes, there you go. The Aftermath books are good, by the way. They take a wee bit of getting into it, but I, I quite enjoyed the experience overall. I would recommend you start getting into the Star Wars canon books. For that, I would need to learn to read. Okay, well, you're learning to speak, so that's something. <laughs> so, Cobb Band uh, finds the Pike Syndicate. What happens there, then? Uh, so, he basically gives them a chance to leave because they are running spice through his town and he does not want that. And is it is space like basically a drug? Because I've, I've just yeah, kind of heard it. Space, yeah. space drug. Yeah. Space drug. So they're running drugs through his town or through his territory and he's the marshal and he gives them kind of like an ultimatum to leave, don't come back and they can all live basically. But obviously then being the bad guys, Try and grab their guns, and he guns down three of them. Um, cool. Pretty cool moment. Yeah, yeah. So it shows that he's quite a skilled gunfighter as well. Um, and he tells the last Pike remaining to leave the space as a kind of forfeit, and he can go back to his bosses and tell them that anyone who comes through there again, uh, if they get lost going through his territory, they'll be lost forever. Which I thought was a kind of a cool line. I don't think I said it properly, but and I think um, we do see um, at least one of the bosses at the end of this episode, which we'll get to. Yeah, and it's also worth noting as well, like the Pike says, the space is worth more in the town, mm. and he could quite easily keep it for himself, but he yeah. kicks it over and destroys it, which I kind of I think sets up that even after all this time's passed, he's still got quite a lot of in- integrity in his character. Yeah, he seems like a pretty decent guy. Yeah. So, that's just a wee bit in Tatooine at the start, but then we transition into Mando, not Boba, and his new revamped Naboo Starfighter. Yep, and it's still looking sexy. I like it. I've, um... I had my issues with last week's episode, but I've kind of got over that now, and I can really appreciate how cool the ship is. Yeah, definitely. So do you want to take us away in what transpires on the, the new unnamed, planet? The unnamed planet. I did a wee bit of research. Paul, I know you were doing some homework tonight, just jotting down some notes, etc. I tried to find out what the planet uh, the Mandalorian visits was. It's As far as I'm concerned, and I looked at a few different sources, it's still unnamed. Oh. So we'll, we'll, we'll come back to that because I don't think we actually know yet. So Mando parks the Naboo Starfighter. And then we see a kind of aerial, and then we quickly see one of um, the most iconic droids in Star Wars history, and one of my long-time favourite characters, R2-D2. Yeah, he's sending his wee, a wee beacon. Oh, I think he must have did a, did a um, scan and find Mando coming in, and then send out a beacon so they could find him kind of thing. I, I missed that, but I just got distracted by seeing his, his little head. <laughs> so then R2, R2-D2 uh, or Mando basically says he's here to see the, the little guy which he affectionately calls Grogu yeah. and obviously because we've seen R2-D2 we know and obviously it was a massive deal at the end of the Mandalorian that we're going to see Luke and ultimately we'll see Grogu as well so that's kind of what you're expecting so R2-D2 takes Mando on a wee tour through the forest and then we see, we see some pretty cool kind of like spider-like droids yeah, I was thinking more like kind of ants, you know what I mean? Like, um, mm. uh, they've got six, six, le- six or eight legs, I can't remember what it was, but yeah, they're basically taking stones from around the forest and slowly building up. That looks like, the t- is it the temples from the movies? 
It's the temple that Luke and Arthur kneel in front of when Kylo Ren destroys it in the flashbacks in the sequel trilogy. Yeah, I thought that. I thought that. So, so yeah, I kind of feel. Sorry, on you go. Sorry, Paul, I interrupted you. That was one of our things we said we wouldn't do. So I'll let you continue. Why, thank you, good sir. Um, yeah, so, uh, and I'm saying air quite a lot, which I meant not to. Ah, it's fine, we'll get there. Yeah. So, they're building the, they're building the temple uh, with the different stones, and there's actually quite a lot of them, so uh, Luke seems to have done quite a bit of sourcing on the old droid market. I think Maybe Luke's... A few, a few I I think Luke's maybe got a bit of a computing science degree. Like he must have had to program them. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. He either has a wee meeting at the start and tells him exactly what to do, or he's programmed them to build that temple. Or he's got lots of money. It's quite similar to the temple on Acto in The Last Jedi, but it isn't that. We know that because Luke kind of flees to there. Yeah. Um, so the temple's getting built. Yeah. What's your, what's your next memory from there? Oh, I just wanted to say as well, like, um, see the actual planet itself. It's actually quite refreshing being somewhere other than Tatooine. Yeah. Because uh, it's just been lots of sand, lots of sand, lots of sand. It's coarse and, it and rough and irritating. It gets everywhere. Oh, you and your coat. Um, yeah, so I actually think the landscape is, like, really nicely done. Quite a, a wee breath of fresh air for the series, anyway, at least. Um. And as well, um, when Mando lands and he's talking like to R two D two, he's even like engaging, talking to the androids, trying to figure out um, where everyone is, because R two actually shuts himself off, and the wee androids make him a bench. That one. I was going to mention um, that 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 was a just like last week, another good wee bit of humor. He's like, how long is this? How's, how long is this going to take? And they actually build them a bench to sit on. I thought that was quite funny. Yeah, yeah. But it's quite funny as well. It's, it's funny seeing Mando's relationship with droids kind of change over the different series because obviously he hated them at the start. He kind of became more relaxed after the IG droid that helped him in the Mandalorian. Yeah. And now he just kind of really... He talks really like R two D T is his wee pal, and the androids. He talks kind of okay to them, kind of thing. Yeah. So I think this show has good uh, character development. Yeah, they have quite good arcs. Yeah. I thought it was quite funny that R two D two shut himself down. It's a wee bit of a nod to like Force Awakens when he basically shuts his power down. So that could be like a wee nod there. Yeah, I kind of thought as I did kind of remind me of that. So. I'm just trying to remember exactly what the next bit is. So he's seen that getting built. Does he? Do we then transition to when Luke and Grogu are sitting meditating? Yep, that's correct. Yeah. So Grogu strikes me as not the best student. He's very distracted. He's got one eye open when he's meant to be meditating, and he's he's checking out some of the frogs or one one frog in the pond. Yeah, I quite like that. It still it still shows his kind of mischievous that he was in the Mandalorian series. He's still always on the lookout for food. And there was a great scene when Luke basically one-ups Grogu and lifts all the frogs out of the pond at the one time then just drops them back in. I thought that was a really nice show of his mm. abilities. But I think we need to mention as well um, Luke's face is way, way, way better than it was in the Mandalorian, I believe. I had been moments where I thought it looked a bit weird, certain like um, angles, but there's quite a few scenes where it does look just really good, and you literally could turn your brain off and think it was Mark Hamill. Yeah, like you're saying, if you if you kind of don't look to like look for mistake, you look, don't really. Yeah, don't look, look. Don't, don't look. You said don't look. Oh, silly me. Um, but yeah, the CGI, the CGI or deep fake, whatever they did, is a million times better than it was in the Mandalorian. I find the Mandalorian one really janky. So I think, I yeah, I think I seen something somewhere that I think somebody had fixed his face on YouTube and they got the guy in that did that to help them 
Yeah. And I think they borrowed techniques from the MCU as well um, to help them with that because they did it with, I think, Robert Downey Jr. and Michael Douglas, like yeah. de-aged them. So yeah. I think they borrowed some techniques from there as well. And it opens up a lot of future potential because there's been talk in the past of a Luke Skywalker series and that generally is something that could happen now, which is quite exciting. And it, it could be the same for other characters as well. I know. Stick Mark Hamill on ice, just protect him. He's going to bubble. He is my... He's like... He's maybe like my favourite like celebrity ever. Yeah, he's... He's just... He's such a cool guy as well. Like... Yeah, I think so many nice things for people. Yeah, we should try and yeah. engage him, Paul. Should we try and get a wee bit of convo with Mark Hamill going? Oh, that's all you, man. You got the better power. <laughs> so, Luke and Grogu are having a wee meditate. The frogs come out, etc. And he's, he's teaching Grogu about the force, but Grogu's not really focusing, is he? No, not really. He's, he's a, uh, like I was saying, he's quite mischievous and. They decide to go a wee walk. And that's I like when... I like the Sorry. in this episode. Yeah. We've got a, quite a unique way of walking side by side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Force pushing them along, which is quite funny. It was a yeah. creative way to do it. And then Luke starts talking, comparing Grogu to the great master Yoda. So there were some nice wee quotes there about uh, how much of a great heart Yoda had and how he spoke in riddles, and I thought that was quite a meta. There's quite a few meta moments in this episode. I thought, yeah, yeah, that was good. It was quite nice for him to to mention Yoda and reminisce in the way because I was thinking it is quite nice to think about the old films whilst you're watching this. Yeah, and obviously, look, looking like he does makes you kind of immediately think of Return of the Jedi. Anyway, yeah, yeah. So they go so... to walk, and then look senses kind of Grogu's a wee bit troubled and a wee bit of a dilemma so Luke kind of asks him if he wants to like find out a bit about his past essentially yeah so he asks him if he remembers anything from his home and like you're saying he looks very he looks a bit troubled so he touches him in the head and says I hope you remember and that's when we get an awesome flashback from Order 66 yep and we see Grogu being defended by three Jedi. With you, you don't see them. any of their you don't see any of their faces. So no, I think I think that was intentional. I don't think it was like because you know in the Mandalorian they spoke about somebody saved them from the temple. Yeah. So there was a lot of theories of who that could have been, but they intentionally didn't show who those Jedi were. I, I I've got a feeling they might come back to this maybe in. Uh, Mando season three, maybe I'll give a bit more detail. Yeah, I think so. They must do because it's kind of a big mystery of how did he escape. Obviously, when Order sixty six was going down, because he was just a wee baby, so or um, like a baby anyway. So, yeah. but see, see the middle Jedi that was defending him was that the librarian? So cast on you. I would need to watch. I would need to watch it again to be honest. I'm yeah, planning on doing a, a third watch of this at some point. Yeah, when I first seen it, I thought that really looks yeah. like that librarian woman that was uh, scolding Obi Wan. Um, to cast a new, put a bit of respect on her name. I don't even know how you remember that, but I'll go with it. I'm, but I'm yeah, right. So Mando's obviously on the lookout for Grogu, but then a, another character that is very highly regarded in the Star Wars circles appears instead. Ahsoka Tano from the Clone Wars series that I have not watched. Can't believe you've not watched Clone Wars. Like so much key content in there. I know. So, that's what I'm always fear in case I'm missing things from yeah. these episodes. But I'll 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 tell you. Don't worry. Thanks. Ah- Ahsoka, obviously, we saw in Mandalorian season two, episode five, I think it was, and it was her that obviously put. Mando on the path to getting Grogu to look. So he's quite surprised when she kind of turns up. Yeah, he's sleeping on the, ben- on the bench and I think he senses her and draws his pistol on her and she... <coughs> is, it, is this what you said earlier on that 
she said, are you surprised to see me again? Yeah, she said, are you surprised to see me again? And I kind of felt like that was a wee nod to like, the fans being surprised to see her because it's not a character I expected to see in this series. Yeah, I didn't think she would be in the same place as Luke Skywalker. I wouldn't. I was yeah. always I just assumed that they would they would never cross paths. Yeah, so Mando basically says, like, why are you okay with Luke training Grogu, but you wouldn't do it? And she just said something along the lines of, like, she can't make other people's choices or something something like that. Yeah. And throughout the whole exchange, you can just tell that Mando's so desperate to see Grogu. It's, it's, so it's nice, kind so. of... It gives it, you the... Even though you don't have a heart, it gives you must give you a wee bit of the feels. Yeah. And it's quite funny because he, like, Ahsoka keeps questioning him and he keeps kind of going back to, oh, he's a foundling, that's why I need yeah. to look after him. That he's just kind of making an excuse that the foundling is why he's there rather than because he actually has a strong connection to him. I don't think that's the reason at all. He's obviously got the present to give, uh, which Ahsoka kind of says it's maybe better if I give it to him rather than you because if he sees you, He's he's not he's not going to want you to leave. It's a bit like if you come home to see your pet or your your child, and they don't want you to disappear. That's the kind of relationship they've got. So, what does Mando ultimately decide to do? Oh, he decides to give the armor to Ahsoka because well, we had think... actually we hadn't actually ascertained yet that that was armor. So that was what was in the package. I knew it was armor. I said last week it was armor. I knew it was I armor. Thought, I, I thought it was like the wee, the wee ball thing you played with in the Mandalorian. No, I called it last week, Jane Neal. Yeah, so he, he gives that to Ahsoka and then he essentially jets off. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was, it was, a, it was sad. It was hit, hits you uh, right in the field. See, when the Grogu's wee, wee face, like when he saw the ship go and he just looked so sad, that was. Um, I literally can't watch the last scene. See when Din and Grogu say bye to each other at the end of Mandalorian season two. I literally can't watch that scene. That that gets me. <laughs> <laughs> and anyone that didn't cry during that is a liar. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I've I've rewatched like the whole series apart from the last episode because I couldn't bring myself to watch that bit again. But now that now there's maybe a bit of closure here, maybe I could. So, <clears throat> I mean, I'm quite surprised. That, like, remember the bit in, I think it was chapter two, the, we don't actually see the rancor. I felt that was a wee bit like this. I think everybody expected uh, Din to see Grogu, but they kind of pulled a wee curveball there and it didn't, it didn't happen. Yeah, yeah. It was it was, it was a bit sad. Um, I see, and see, because he's like, he's sitting there going, oh, I came all this way. He's right there. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, oh, go see your boy. Go see him. Yeah. It reminds me a wee bit of the end of one of the Pixar movies. It's a, I don't know if you've seen it. It's one of the newer ones. The names escape me. But there's a similar bit at the end of that movie. It's a bit like that. No. The, name, the, the, name, the, the, the names escape me for a moment. So <laughs> uh, Mando goes away. And then we see a bit of a montage of Luke training Grogu, which has some great nostalgia points and some great moments, I would say. Yeah, it's uh, a lot of callbacks to Empire, isn't it? Yeah, so seeing Luke with Grogu on his back, because you've probably seen like the kind of meme photos where it's like uh, like Ray on Yoda's back, do you know what I mean? Like, or Ray on Luke's back. I think they did like a kind of parody of. Yoda on Luke's back, but it was like Luke on Ray's back when they're training. I don't know if you've oh, seen yeah, like yeah. stupid images, but we actually do. <laughs> and you, you get in it, so he's doing like the back flip and the forward flips and everything. And he gets out a, a training tool that we remember or we should recognize. I know, but you've missed out this cute force training, his uh, cute jumping. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's like when you first start playing a video game and you haven't quite worked out the buttons yet. <laughs> yes. but he, he, he adapts quite quickly and he starts kind of jumping about the rocks but when he's jumping about the rocks he's escaping what uh, the training droid from A New Hope and it's hitting wee blaster bolts at him and baby Yoda's starting to move like Master Yoda I don't think it's 
the exact same one because remember Finn picks that up in the Force Awakens. Yeah, yeah, I just meant the same yeah. kind of model. So yeah, I don't think it's the exact same one, and it's pretty yeah. brutal. Like I don't know, are they like. What kind of power do those things have? Because it obviously shoots Grogu. Obviously, it's not going to be fatal, but like, is, yeah. it, is it real fire or is it just like? I think it's I think it's CGI. Uh, no, I don't mean that. I mean like in terms of <laughs> a, 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 the in-universe explanation. Is it just going to sting you a bit? I think so. I think it's never just... looked get hit, hit by it when he was what when he was facing it in a new hope. Yeah, I think it's just you kind of like taser bolts or something. I don't know. I don't know, but right. yeah, you can you can see kind of Grogu mature through the training through the episode. I think because obviously when you first see him, he's kind of messing about trying to eat frogs mm-hmm. and stuff. But by the end of the training, he's flapping about rocks. He's using his force power to crush the training droid. Um, he's balancing, uh, using his balance and watching look. Unleash some saber skills, like um, showing yeah. off some moves. And but he eventually gets tired and takes a nap on the rock, which is quite cool because I've actually caught up to the exact point in the episode that we're talking about right now. That's pretty cool, isn't it? All oh, right, I think it must be slightly ahead of you because I've got it in the background too. So there's a bit you might not appreciate as much as me, but people have wanted Luke and Ahsoka to meet or know each other for years because obviously Ahsoka was Anakin, Luke's father's apprentice, and it's been a big one of like the kind of Clone Wars fans and Star Wars fans in general to have Ahsoka and Luke meet and talk about Anakin. And they did it in a nice subtle way. Ahsoka mentions earlier in the episode she's a friend of the family. And then Luke basically talks about how Grogu's kinda kinda not fully committed. And she says something like, uh, you're you're just like your father. Yeah. So yeah, it, was, yeah. it wasn't in your face. It wasn't, oh, I'm Ahsoka. I'm your dad's apprentice. It was just, we know who you are. And there was just a couple of nice quotes. And to me, it was like the perfect way they said something, but they didn't like just kind of throw it in your face. Yeah. Yeah. I did. I did pick up on that. So I, I obviously I know a wee bit of the Clone Wars kind of thing. So I knew of that relationship and it was quite subtle. And I did appreciate that. And Rebels also builds on um, Darth Vader at that point and Ahsoka's relationship. Paul, you need you need to get in about the Clone Wars and Rebels. There's so much good stuff. You'd absolutely love it as well. I'll think can about you, it. Can you make that commitment to me? Oh, I'll try, boss. I'll try. And then, basically, this kind of leads in towards the end of the episode, which we'll talk about at the end, but basically, kind of, yeah. Grogu needs to make a choice between being with Din and being a Mandalorian, essentially, and being a Jedi. So that kind of transition is into Mando arriving on Tatooine. Yeah. Well, there's just something seen in the previous scene just before we get to that. Um, there's something that Luke mentions. He says that, that Grogu isn't learning things off him. It's more like he's remembering. Yeah, so he's got like this kind of suppressed skills. Because like, Luke obviously shut himself off from the Force in The Last Jedi. So maybe that's kind of trauma for Grogu of the Order 66 meant he kind of he kind of cut himself off a bit yeah I think that's what Ahsoka says in one of the episodes that Grogu cut himself off but it's just intriguing to maybe think what what does he actually know and what yeah. what other powers does he actually have and he doesn't he hasn't come to bear yet it'd be cool to see that uh, over it'd be cool if like Grogu became like one of the main Jedi in a future Jedi Order imagine a future series with a proper Jedi Council and stuff again, a new generation. It's pretty cool. There's uh, a... That's next year on Disney Plus. Yeah, I saw a cool wee image that talked on social media and it talked about the fact both Grogu and Din's childhood were kind of scarred by attacks by droids, or not droids, so just attacks in general. So there's a scene in Mandalorian where Din's hiding in the kind of bomb shelter and the super battle droids are coming to get him. So Grogu and Din have had a kind of similar experience at a young age. Yeah, kind of mirroring each other. Yeah, which is pretty cool. Their their dynamic is one of my favourite kind of Star Wars partnerships now, I'd say. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> Without a doubt. So, getting to Tatooine then, so we can kind of cover that portion. So he arrives in Tatooine, 
Uh, who's he greeted by in the hangar of Jabba's palace? Mr. Piggy. Yep, and I thought he was maybe going to cause some trouble for Din, but as soon as uh, Din uses Fennec Shan's name, he gets into the palace quite quickly. There's a big cameo yeah. in this next scene, is there not? Is there? <laughs> I missed it. <laughs> it's, um, you may not know him, he's, he's quite mysterious. He's not quite a Mandalorian. I think his name's like Fett. Oh, he makes a wee cameo appearance in the in this episode. Yeah, it does make a, a kind of yeah. <laughs> I thought you were being serious there for a second. <laughs> no, I saw I saw I saw, I saw, I saw somewhere that like a joke about this massive cameo and it was Boba Fett. I just couldn't resist. Yeah, it was when I seen him. I was like, oh yes, then we're gonna get they were in the business. And well, Fen- 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 sorry, he literally says nothing. He nods. He nodded at one point. He nods once, yeah. That's that's his big big thing this whole episode. And, uh, F- Fennec Shan seems to have taken over the kind of rousing speeches role. And I yeah. wonder if that's to do with Tamura Morrison basically complaining <laughs> in public that he's, his character is speaking too much. Do you think it, they're purposely giving him less lines as the series goes on? Well, if he's, if he's going to be doing that, then he should put his helmet on and just look kind of Menacing then, because I think if he just stand, he just looks like an extra. He may as well be an got, extra. Yeah, I got Game of Thrones vibes from this wee scene. It kind of reminded me of like the the war planning battles around the table. Yeah, like a war council. Yeah. So they're talking about how that kind of war is coming. I don't know about you. I feel like they haven't quite built the pikes up as big enough threat yet. Like this, the huts arrived. That turned out to be a red herring. The pikes got off a ship. But up to this point, apart from selling some drugs, they've not really done much, have they? Yeah, not really. And like, they're not the most physically intimidating either. I, I don't think. I think they're quite interesting. I think their voices are quite intimidating. See the one that spoke at the start of the episode. I thought his voice was quite intimidating. Yeah, but like, yeah, yeah, he was. He did sound pretty cool. But I saying like, if there's like a hundred of those we critter going about, I'd like, mm. oh, oh dear, we're in slight trouble. I don't know if they've built... So we've had a similar problem that, uh, uh, what do you call it, Falcon and the Winter Soldier had. I don't feel like they've... Kind of similar villains, like kind of terrorist types. They've not kind of built them up maybe enough yet. Oh, God, now you're spelling on that too. It was Game of Thrones, Harry Potter, and now... It's tradition I've ruined something a week. Yeah, I will keep it's really, going. It's, it's really minor spoilers. So they basically say that they, the, the mods... The guy, the people with the modifications, they've been patrolling the streets, but there's not enough of them to kind of maintain order. So they've got their muscle now. They've got a uh, big BK, and they've got a um, Mando now. But they basically say they need a bit more muscle. So they no, need to be better. Foot about... soldiers. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I just contradicted what I said. But they need <laughs> some foot soldiers. So then had a wee suggestion of who could maybe get involved here. <clears throat> yeah. So Boba does his main thing. Nods at Mando, and Mando says yeah. he can help with some getting some foot soldiers. But um, it's just uh, just a wee kind of side point as well. Doesn't it feel like on all these scenes now that Fennec? It seems to be like I feel like this is like a series like the book of Fennec rather than the book of Boba Fett because Fennec seems to be doing all the running, all the fighting, all the kind of like you're saying the big rousing speeches and stuff like she. If you were watching this and you didn't know the title, you'd think she was the main character. Yeah. So we bit, I'm going to read another show. So we bit like, like Hawkeye. Another character takes a wee bit of centre stage in there. Well, I've seen the trailer and I know there's only two of them. So Hawkeye's really good, by the way. You should watch it. We'll move that review at some point. That's really good. Generally really good. Yeah. Um, anyway. So, yeah, so he basically says he's going to go and get Cobb Van. And his kind of town folk that fought against the Great Dragon in Mando's season opener, season two. Yeah, but before he gets there, what does he do? <clears throat> what does he do? Oh, poor memory. <laughs> Remember the Jawas? Yeah. So he does a wee flyby, and the Jawas are all happy, and they've got uh, they are falling. The dragon. It looks like a Great Dragon skull. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was a Great Dragon. So, hold on the crate dragon skull on top of the sand crawler. 
mm-hmm. and they're all cheering because I think that's probably the same Jabba's that helped them build his Starfighter. Okay. That was what I took from it anyway, that they helped, they were the ones that helped him, the Starfighter, so they were cheering when he was flying by kind of thing. I thought okay, it was a nice moment. I didn't, I didn't quite catch that. So he goes to the same wee kind of cafe slash cantina that he first met, met um, his pal in. Yeah, he, he touches down in Mos Pelgo and he's immediately greeted by an over-eager uh, deputy. Oh, I didn't like him. He was my least favourite character in the episode. Yeah, yeah. and uh, he, he, He's very um, he's very insubordinate. He can't follow instructions. Yeah, and comes back to bite him. But right, anyway, we'll get to that. I, we're, we just got to be a bit ahead there. Yep. So he reunites with Cobb Vanth. And I found it quite nice as well. Like um, he's asking like how he is and stuff like that. He's having like a, a yeah, kind no, of friendly no. conversation with yeah. him. He's asking where Grogu was, and he said we both loved something we loved because obviously he loved his Mandalorian armor that he doesn't have anymore. And for all the times Boba wears it, maybe he could have left it with him. <laughs> yeah, that's actually a good point. <laughs> yeah, oh, just the helmet at least, there. Uh. And there's another recurring character in that scene. There's the kind of bar, the barman. Yeah. A, a wee, wee, wee koi. I think that's the species. You see a few of them in Jabba's sail barge in Return of the Jedi. Yeah, I actually quite like him. He's quite funny. He's, he has a couple of wee one-liners that he puts yeah. in on time, but he's quite funny. Yeah, he's not the worst. Um, But yeah, so Mando's proposal is for Vanth to lead a garrison of town folk attacked his foot soldiers mm-hmm. and he's quite reluctant because they like their wee slice of uh, peace and they don't want to really get involved in the big city uh, issues kind of thing. Oh, I remember one of the quotes now. On you go. Remember, remember the thing I said earlier that I, I, I noticed something? Yes. I can't remember what it was. So... They were talking about, well, first of all, they've renamed Moss Pelgo Freetown now. Yep. And then they talk about how they're, it's like, that's a city problem, not a town problem. And they said, it's all the same planet. It really reminded me of Naboo and how they talk about how what will affect Feed will affect the Gungans too. I, I thought that was a nod to Naboo and the Gungans. When he said it's all the same planet. Oh, actually, yeah, that's quite a quite a good good point. I never noticed that. Yeah, um, I, I, I like to pay it. attention to the kind of be subtle, be subtle lines, and I thought that was quite interesting. No, I like I like that take on it. I'm so excited. You could probably tell that I remember that because <laughs> there was a few things when I rewatched it today that I just I took a mental note of. I should have actually written down, but sometimes it's funner when you remember it naturally. Yeah. And you use the word funner. It's not a word. Terrible. Right. So Mando goes away. Um, he doesn't. He's. I don't know. He didn't quite say yes or no, did he? Yeah. He um, said. He said he would try, but because Mando asked him as a favor, and he knows that Mando wouldn't really ask him for a favor, favor, unless it was like totally last ditch. Mm-hmm. So. Once Mando leaves, Cobb tells the barman, "Look, get the word out. I need everybody, every man and woman of fighting age, come meet me. I need to speak to them." And then mm. we see a silhouette in the distance. Yes, the wind picks up. The wind chimes start chiming away, and the tension starts building. This was proper Western, wasn't it? Just from the music to the setting and the, the where the characters were standing, etc. Oh, yeah. It was just so old school Western, but it was done so well. So the character, and I knew who it was as soon as I saw the hat. Who was it, Paul? Uh, another one of your uh, Clone Wars characters, Cad Bane. Cad Bane, feared bounty hunter of an adversary of Boba Fett. He was first seen in the Clone Wars. Spoilers, he kind of tried to kidnap the Chancellor within the Senate. 
and throughout the Clone Wars, he's just a really cool character, and he's just, he's just highly respected within the the canon, and he does appear. He also appears in Bad Batch as well. He actually fights Fennec Shan, ironically. So he does. And, and Bad Batch, that. so it'd be interesting to see if they have a a wee tiff again. So, mm-hmm. Cobb Van is up to we know as Cad Bane, but he actually asks his name twice and he just gets patched twice. Yeah, and on the subtitles, he's just introduced as uh, Stranger. He it looks doesn't... so good, though. So, those who know what he looks like in the animated series, he looks like that, but better. He looks really cool. Character design. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He actually looks really pretty scary. He's got like sharp teeth. Red eyes, and he looks like angry as hell. The one thing that was missing is his famous toothpick. I actually saw yeah. this on tw- Twitter and I shared it on our account. Like, the question of the day where is that toothpick? Because he always had a toothpick in his mouth. Yeah. I've, it was well, I've, only seen a thing. I've only seen him a couple of times, and I wouldn't have noticed that. So, good on you. So, Basically, there's kind of tension, guns coming out of holsters. And well, then... he, gives, he gives him an ultimatum first. He's like, whatever fits paying you, uh, we'll match it as long as you just let everything slide kind of thing. Don't get involved. Which, and he calls and... Fett like a, a war criminal, essentially, and work for the Empire, trying to like kind of... Yeah, as if he's a good guy. <laughs> char- char- character assassination. Yeah. And then, of course... The stupid deputy does not go inside with the townsfolk like he's instructed. He comes out and he says, the marshal can't be bought. At which point the marshal looks at him like, oh yeah, well, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Are you going to get me killed? And uh, I don't think he did. Uh, Cobb took one shot to like the kind of chest, but if he was, he's a big enough character. If he was dead, we would have known about it. So I think he survives. But I don't think his trusty deputy survives. No, yeah, like you're saying, Vant gets shot once. And I'm pretty sure he's still alive. But yeah, will, the, the deputy got shot about yeah. seven times. I think Cad took a real dislike to him and shot him lots. And he is, he's dead, dead. Do you know I thought was interesting? Did Cobb just, like, where did he walk from? Like, did he park a ship for a speeder? Or did he just walk, like, a really long distance there and back? Uh, he parked his uh, vehicle out in the flats because he respects the laws. Yeah. So um, there's one more scene on Tatooine before we have the kind of conclusion with Luke and Grogu in the sanctuary. Yeah. Well, just see see before we get to that. Um, yep. Cad tells the people of the town that as long as the spice runs, they'll be left alone. Uh, so it could either go one of two. Obviously, if Fanth is still alive, it might galvanise the town and make them want to fight more. But yeah. if it turns out to be dead, then it could scare them into submission, which leaves Fett in an even more precarious position. And I think they will. I think I think they will join the fight in the last episode. Yeah, the angle will be like when these things will be like, everything looks lost and then they'll turn up at the last minute kind of thing. Because... I, still the, uh, I still think the Tuscan Raiders will show up as well. Not the dead ones, but like maybe one of the other tribes. <laughs> Zombie Tuscan Raiders. I, I, I feel like, no, like one of the other kind of factions. I feel like mm-hmm. I feel like they will have some kind of impact on the final episode. Yeah, the warrior one has to come back, surely. Surely. Well, we will we will see. So, Sanctuary, there's one last kind of important scene before the finale. Yes, uh, Garza Sanctuary um, starts off with, with two Pike uh, Syndicate members walk into Garza Sanctuary with a... I can't, I can't always get this wrong, is it? Com, Comtana? Con, I can't remember what you call yeah. it. Yeah. It's basically, it's the thing that the, it was like a famous thing in the background of Empire Strikes Back on Bespin. There was a character running about with an ice cream maker 
and it was caught on camera and became a big thing. So they actually made it into like a Star Wars like item as well. Yeah, so they walk into that, walk into the garages with a basically a, a glammed up uh, ice cream maker. Yeah, and like I don't know about you, but see the like as soon as they walked in, I felt like the whole thing was off. Like there was something very yeah. wrong with them. Something uh, happened. So they go sit down in a booth, uh-huh. and uh, the Twi'leks go and ask them if they want their helmet shined. As they do. Um, they don't. The droid comes up and asks them if they want any drinks, and they order a couple of drinks. Um, but when they, the drinks come, they leave, just walk straight out, casually, like, nobody's any much the wiser. And so the droid picks up the ice cream maker, and he's like, oh, you forgot your ice cream maker. At this point, you can just see Garza's face twig, like something's up, and the whole place blows. It was like blows up. So I think, like everyone you've seen from like episode one to four in there, yeah, they're they're gone. I liked uh, Jessica Biel's character, so it's a shame that that's her probably or most likely gone. Most likely, yeah. Hope you never know. Like people have survived weirder Uh, things in Star Wars, but um. Yeah, it was ki- it was cool. It was very gangland style. Um, like you've seen it in like loads of monster movies, um, yeah. which I kind of wish had happened more in the previous. Ups, ups, the state, ups the stakes a wee bit. We're talking about the pikes not being very menacing, but the fact they've blown up a a, a regular uh, location in the series makes it kind of up the stakes a wee bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, it just shows they do have some bite to them, and they're not. Um, they're not above. I was going to say above going for underhanded tactics, but that doesn't even make sense. But you know what I mean. They're not. Um, they'll go below the belt to hit you yeah. hard. And uh, let's just hope Max Rebo is not dead. Oh, please, Max Rebo be alive. Okay, so we're a couple of minutes to fifty minutes, so we're probably going up just over our time last week. We're doing so well. So we've got the the important final scene with Grogu and Luke. Yeah, you can take this one away, bud. So they're kind of sitting in like kind of wee bit of the temple, and Luke essentially gives Grogu a choice of basically take this nice chainmail and become a Mandalorian and go hang out with Din in his new spar- uh, starship, where he's actually got a wee seat for you, ready to go where the droid should be. I think that's a wee bit of a pre pre spoiler that he's probably going to go with Mando and then rejoin him for season three. Or a massive I'm, red herring. I'm totally okay with. Um, or he offers him Master Yoda's green lightsaber, which was a pretty cool moment. And did Luke steal that out of Yoda's be hut in the Return of the Jedi? Then, <laughs> yeah, mine. <laughs> you're dead. You're dead now. I steal your lightsaber. Yep, he so, did not bury it in the desert. <laughs> There's some quite deep moments in there when he's talking about the future and how Grogu, the way he ages, basically then they'll be long gone when Grogu's still young. So that was quite an interesting bit that you might have to go on without the Mandalorian, which was quite sad. Quite a sad moment. But but let's not think about it. Let's just go on. So so Grogu's to obviously make his choice. Uh, My prediction is he'll go with Mando. I don't know about you. Ah, he has to surely, but I would. I'd, I think if he goes with Mando so early after leaving, it kind of cheapens the end of season two. Yeah, but, yeah. So we'll see so, what happens there. Yeah, um, so the that, that's, that's kind of where the episode ends. There's some cool art again. I'm gonna get both times. I've kind of not had a chance to really look at the uh, the artwork at the end of the episode, so I'm quite keen to check that out in a bit more detail. Yeah, it's outstanding as always. Um, but we quick, quick question: What would you choose if you're in Grogu's position? If I was Grogu, yes. Yeah. Would you go for the lightsaber or the armor? I'm a believer, particularly nowadays, in having a life and relationships over career. So I would go for Mando. 
Me too. Like it. Good choice. There you go. Yeah. So that is, I've just got the scene on with Grogu and Luke and just try to see if, because I've never done something I said earlier, another wee moment that I, I noticed. Cause I, I, there was the one about the Gungans, but I feel there was something in this scene that was said that I wanted to share. So just while we're finishing up, I'll I'll shout it out if I if it comes to me, okay? I think you made this line up, but hey ho. No, there was the, I'm sure there was something in here. I can feel it. Oh, we forgot a scene just really earlier on. I'll just very quickly touch on it. When Luke and Grogu are looking out at the the planetscape and he's talking about balance, I really like that scene. It reminded me of the scene in Last Jedi when they're talking about the balance between the light and the dark. I really like that bit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That was really I mean, cool when he climbs, the, he climbs the top. Yeah, I like that. Anyway, mm-hmm. let's, not, let's not digress. Ratings, no. for the, ratings for the episode out of five. I say we go five, four, three, two, one, and then give her a ranking. If, if so I we did, five. The first one, we did the first ones out of ten, we're going down to five now. Yeah. Fine, we'll do it at ten then. So, but we'll count down from five. Five. Four, three, two, one. Nine. I'm going ten. I'm okay. I'm o- I'm over. Not over. I think Boba should be in his own show more. But if I put that to the side, this episode just did so much, and people might just say it was fan service, but there were so many nice moments between Grogu and Luke, Luke and Ahsoka, seeing Cobb Bam, seeing Cad Bane. There was just there was so much in it that was. It really cheered me up after a poor football result. Last night. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Um. Yeah. I I went a nine only because like it's meant to be the book of Boba Fett and the main man is getting absolutely no. I feel like he's been done real dirty in this whole series, and I felt like it just needed like see if it was if it wasn't called the book of Boba Fett, it'd probably got a ten like. Yeah. What that's funny because um, you're basically me last week. Yeah, I know it's 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 hard, like because he was there. Well, I, I feel like Mando. I'm just like, yeah, we came all this way to watch him. And he's I feel right like Mando's. There. I feel like Mando's doing things that Boba could have done. Like Boba could have went to see Cobb. Yeah. And like you stole my armor. That that'd have been probably more interesting, yeah, because he's wearing his armor now. Yeah, yeah. But that that that, that would have been quite good dialogue. But... Yeah. That could but still think, come. That could yeah. come in the finale. Yeah, I feel like the episode in general was directed really well, and it was yeah. by the the, the saviour Dave, Dave Filoni. Filoni. Dave Filoni, the saviour himself. Filoni. Right. So, Paul, I think just before we finish up, I think you had a wee shout out to give to a friend of our channel. Yes, our channel illustrator Daniel Hassan. Uh, he's done incredible work uh, making up our logo. And our banner, and just basically, basically helping us in general, just a lot of concept ideas. Uh, instead of us having like a, a stock photo, so making us kind of look professional, even though we don't sound too professional. So, uh, yeah, uh, we're, we're we're getting there. Yeah, Thanks, Dad, I would just like to say I really appreciate everything you've done as well, and I hope to meet you one day, and we can we can talk some Star Wars. So just in terms of where people can find us, we're on Twitter, we're on Facebook, and we're on Instagram, and we're slowly growing our following there. Our podcast is on Anchor, it's on Spotify. It's now also, we're going up in the world, it's on Apple Podcasts as well, rubbing shoulders with the Jamie Carragher podcast. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, and also we're not trying to get a, a YouTube on the go as well. Yeah, we've actually created a YouTube account. We're going to try and work out how we can post essentially audio only videos because we're not quite ready to show our mugs on the screen yet. So we'd like to have just that kind of back and image. But we feel yeah. like if YouTube could be a good way to grow the channel. Yeah, once we get some just, plastic surgery, we'll, yeah, we'll, go on YouTube. We'll, we'll, we'll work on that. But <laughs> we hope you enjoyed listening to our slightly longer review of chapter six of the Book of Boba Fett. It was. I think it's one I'm going to watch a lot in my life. I feel like that was just, I don't know, yeah. it gives you quite emotional thinking about it. So I'd like yeah. to just sign off. This was Seismic Cinema. We'll be back next week for the final episode of the season, Chapter 7. And the following week, we're going to do a wee bit of a ranking of the Boba Fett episodes. 
and then we're going to start looking at other some other movies that some of our followers have recommended. I'd like to sign off by saying Paul was Paul. I'm Colin and our slogan, which you'll maybe see on our social media, is the power of escapism. And I think hopefully a lot of our viewers can agree that movies and film really does help you escape some of the more depressing aspects of reality. Well, that was a bombshell to finish on. <laughs> yeah, but you know what I mean. It's it's it, I, yeah. I don't think I could personally live a I think movie and TV just a big part of my life, and hopefully, hopefully you think the same, and the followers think the same. Yeah, and um, if our slogan means anything to you as well, you can escape this podcast as well. Yep, it's, it's ending anyway, so we'll <laughs> see you next time. All right, see you next time. Bye.